just entered a new dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. Next stop on our journey, the Wayback Machine One Zone. Tonight, I'm going to tell you another strange and unusual story of the unexplainable which lies behind the veil. Our story concerns the Haney family. For over 200 years, a Haney had worked this same land. Now it belonged to John and Emma Haney. Everything considered, it had been a good life, uneventful, perhaps even dull, but it suited them. For over 40 years, they have lived in the same house, and for those 40 years, the land had been good to them. Its abundance had fed them and clothed them and helped to raise two sons, John Jr. and James. This was home. They couldn't be happy anyplace else. Their only desire was to spend the rest of the time remaining to them here. Here where they had come so many years ago as man and wife. Simple, down-to-earth people. The Haneys were not given to flights of fancy. But who is not awed and troubled in the presence of death? coming. Jamie. Well, you're going to keep me out here all night? No. Come in, Jamie. Change, Johnny. You're not having any fun, are you? Sitting on the farm by yourself doesn't leave much time for fun, Jamie. John's been working awful hard, Jamie. He would. Old, dependable John. Let me fix you something to eat. No, thanks, Ma. I eat in town. Well, some coffee, then, and a piece of pie? All right. Just a small piece, Ma. I knew you'd get here in time, Jamie. Pa's been asking and asking for you. He has, huh? Probably wants to weld a tar out of me. Oh, Jamie. All right, Ma. Guess I might as well see him. Yeah, I might as well, Jamie. No use making the trip for nothing, is there? He's all right. Take his feet, Jamie. We'll get him back to bed. Pa? Pa, it's me, Jamie. Pa? Pa. What'd you say, Pa? Pa. Did he make much sense? No. Just mumbling. It's been like that for two days now. He knew you, Jamie. I know he did. Sure. Sure he did, Ma. Let's go downstairs. Go on, Johnny. I'll be down in a minute.
How did it happen? His horse stumbled and fell on it. As old as he is, you think he'd have more sense. Jamie, where have you been all this time? All over. New York, Chicago, San Francisco. Kept moving. For 10 years? Well, you know me, Johnny boy. I'm a little surprised you came back. Johnny! Why shouldn't I? Oh, I get it. You're still sore because I took off and you had to stay here and do the work. Well, you could have gotten out, too. And who to run the farm? Or did you forget that Pa was too old even then? All right, all right, so hate me. But don't forget, I was only 17 years old. How much was I supposed to know? You knew enough to steal every cent Pa had in the house. Stop it! Stop it right now. No, let him get it off his chest. So that's it, huh? So that's what's been griping you all these years. Well, let me tell you something. I didn't steal anything. That money belonged to me. It did, huh? Just how do you figure that, Jamie? You know how I figure it. Ever since I was 10 years old, Pa had me doing the work of a hired hand. Only I never got the money a hand would get. Only my food and your hand-me-down clothes. He owed me that money. And how about me, Jamie? What was I doing all those years you were working your poor little fingers to the bone? I was having a picnic, huh? That's your problem, Johnny boy. If you had any gumption, you'd have beaten me to the cash box. Enough! I won't have any more of this in my house. I ought to be ashamed, both of you. Your father's dying right over your heads. You stand there fighting like animals. Jamie, I'm going to fix up your old room. When you're finished, you march yourself upstairs and go to bed. And you, Johnny, not another word. Remember, you're brothers. You just don't understand what gets into you. Here, Ma, let me help you. Thank you. Tell me the truth, Jamie. Just for once. Why did you come back? You never were very bright, were you, Johnny? All right, I'll tell you. Your telegram got to me at the right time. I'm broke. And I figured in ten years the old man had enough time to build up another pile. You make me sick to my guts, Jamie. You should be standing here. Take a look at yourself, Johnny. You're only three years older than I am, and anybody would take you to be my father. You should be sick. You outsmarted yourself this time, Jamie. You made the trip for nothing. If Pa dies, you don't get a dime. Something to eat. Nothing for me, thank you, Emma. Just wanted to see if there's anything I could do. Maybe some delay in settling the estate on account of your father not leaving a will. He did leave a will, Mr. Atterbury. That's funny. I was his lawyer. I didn't draw it. Well, he drew it himself. May I see it? Yes, sir. Leaves everything to you, Johnny. Knowing that as head of the family, you will take care of your mother and young brother. Johnny, I'm so glad. Wait a minute, let me see that. Seems legal, should save us quite a bit of time. Not legal enough. I'm afraid I have a big surprise for you, Johnny boy. What's this? Read it. To my youngest son, James, I leave all my worldly possessions and trust that he will provide for his mother as long as she lives. And it is my hope that he will do what is fair for my eldest son, his brother, John Jr. And which is the legal one? Yours is dated August the 8th, 1892. Jamie is dated July 14th, 1898. Jamie is the one that will stand up in court. I can't imagine what he was thinking about. Two wills. John knew what he was doing. I know what he was thinking. You know his temper, Mr. Atterbury. Upon me had a real knockdown and drag out of my wanting to enlist for Cuba. He said I'd be sorry if I went. Well? 
Why all the sour faces? Ma has nothing to worry about. As you know, I'll take care of you, Johnny boy. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you will, Jamie. Mr. Atterbury, how long will it take for all the legal stuff to clear up? What's your hurry, Jamie? Well, I thought I'd put the farm on the market as soon as I can. But Jamie, you're not going to sell the farm. It's our home. Oh, no, Ma. You know I'm not cut out to be a farmer. Besides, we ought to get a good price for it right about now. But, Jamie... Where'll Ma go, Jamie? Don't worry about that. I'll take care of it. Where, Jamie? Well, you always wanted to visit Aunt Martha in Kansas. Now's your chance. Oh, but, Jamie, that was only for a visit. I can't imagine living any place but here. When she gets back from a visit, what then, Jamie? Well, Ma deserves a rest. You know, at her age, she ought to take it easy. I thought we'd get a room for her at Mrs. Chalmers. That's nothing but a home for old folks. You'd like it, Ma. You wouldn't have to work anymore. And there'd be people your own age to talk to. You know what I mean, Johnny. Sure. I know what you mean, Jamie. To get her off your hands for the rest of your life, you'd like her to sit on a porch and rot. That's what I get for being a nice fellow. Well, this is my farm. Pa left it to me and I'll do what I like. If Ma don't do what I want, okay, you can take care of her. What are you doing? Johnny! Stop it, you two! You hit me, you won't get a cent! Johnny, stop! Listen to me! Jamie's right. I have been working too hard. I'm tired. You know I want to see Martha again, and when I come back, I'd like to live at Mrs. Chalmers. I, it, I think it'd be very nice. All right, Ma. I'll be good. Mr. Atterbury, how do we go about breaking that will? I wouldn't try that, Johnny. Well, I don't know, Johnny. Father was of sound mind when he wrote it. Well, how about the part about taking care of Ma? You call throwing her into a home taking care of her? You know, Pa didn't mean that. Well, there could be a chance of stopping the sale of the farm or preventing the dissipation of the assets during your mother's lifetime. Don't you worry about Ma. I'll take care of her. You just mind your own business. Now, I'll tell you something. Get out of my house. Jamie, he's your brother. Then why don't he act it? He's been beating on me ever since I got here. You heard him. Now, this is my house, and I want you out of here. Johnny, he's upset. Maybe for a little while, till he cools off. Will you take the case, Mr. Atterbury? Yes, Johnny. I'll take it. All right, Jamie. I'll get out of your house. For now. Have your fun while you can. matter of the estate of George Haney, petition for order confirming sale of real property of the estate. Ready for petitioner, Your Honor. Ready for the contestant, Your Honor. Very well, gentlemen, you may proceed. May it please the court. All of the statutory facts necessary for the court's approval of the sale are alleged in the verified petition of Mr. James Haney, the duly appointed executor of the estate. The estate consists entirely of the farm which is being sold and the price offered exceeds the appraised value. It is to the best interest of the estate to convert the real property into cash, since the executor is without funds with which to support his mother or himself or to meet the expenses of the administration of this estate. Your Honor. Your Honor. Now, perhaps we can shorten the issues. Do you propose to introduce evidence that the sales price is too low? No, Your Honor. It's our position. It's not necessary for the sale of this farm at all. Haney family have worked this property for 40 years. Profit. It's ever Haney's home. The source of her care and comfort. That's what John Haney meant to say in his will. What is your own personal reason for trying to void your father's will? I have none. Oh, in other words, then, it... If this court should declare the will invalid, you'd make no attempt to share in your father's estate? No, sir, I would not. Then why has this case been brought to trial in the first place? I just want to make sure that my mother gets what's rightfully hers. Well, now, the wording of the will is quite plain. Your brother James is to take care of your mother. Have you any doubts that he will? I sure do. Would you tell the court what your doubts are? Because I know Jamie. I know how he thinks. He's a liar and a thief. 
Objection. Sustained. Mr. Haney, I must warn you that this court will not tolerate name-calling. Another outburst like that, and I will cite you for contempt. I'm sorry, Your Honor. No further questions. Mr. Bell? No questions. Now, let's, uh, now nearly noon. This court will adjourn until 2.30 o'clock. I gotta run, Ma. I gotta date with a customer for the farm. Jamie, do you have to sell? Yes, I have to. Now, don't you start on me, Ma. I had enough trouble with Johnny. I'll pick you up in time for court. It's all right, Ma. I waited for him to leave. I won't be long. I just want to get some of my things. Please hurry. I don't want any more trouble. Pa! Johnny, look in Genesis 27. What? What'd you say, Pa? Genesis 27. What about Genesis 27, Pa? Johnny? Yeah, Ma, what is it? Johnny, who are you talking to? Nobody, Ma. Nobody. I thought I heard voices. Are you all right, Johnny? Yeah, Ma, I'll be down in a minute, Ma. That's good, Ma. Yes, Jamie, I don't want to be late. You're not in that much of a hurry. Please, Jamie, I want to get there on time. Okay. Ma! Ma! Johnny just came to get his things. You got what you came for? I got more than I came for. I just talked to Pa. Johnny. You what? You're right, Ma, you did hear voices. What's going on here? I talked to Pa and he said, look in Genesis 27. Genesis 27? That's the story of Jacob and Esau, where Jacob stole his brother's birthright. What's that supposed to mean? That's what I'm going to find out. Where's the Bible? Everything in this house is mine. Keep your hands out of there. Get away from me. Jamie! Stop! I want them, Ma. What's the matter, Johnny? Nothing in it? What'd you expect to find? A new will? There is no other will. And I'll tell you something else. The next time I find you in here, even mine ain't gonna stop me from putting a load of buckshot in you. Now get out of my house and stay out. Please go, Johnny. Johnny boy. Might as well take Genesis 27 with you. That's all you're gonna get. Mr. Haney, much has been made of the fact that you wish to sell your farm and place your mother in what has been called an old folks home. Would you tell the court exactly what it is you had in mind? Yes, sir. Your Honor, my mother's worked hard all her life. As long as I can remember, she's been cooking, sewing, washing. Why, she even helped in the fields when we were short-handed. Up until now, we've never been able to do anything about it. But now I can, and I want to. Ma, is your this Honor? the family Bible? Isn't it obvious, Mr. Haney? Didn't we used to have another cruel, one? Yes, your father. Is Where is it, Ma? I don't know, On Johnny. Here is a In the attic, I expect. His mother, and whose only wish is to see that the rest of her days are happy ones. Mr. Blue, are you making your summation, or do you intend to question your witness any further? No further questions. Stradiberry? 
I beg the court's indulgence. The matter which has a bearing on this issue requires investigation. Might we recess until tomorrow? I don't believe that will be necessary, Mr. Atterbury. I have heard enough and am prepared to rule. However, I will delay my ruling until noon tomorrow. If within that time you have anything to bring to the court's attention, I will receive it. In Mr. Blue's presence, of course. This court stands adjourned. Ready, Ma? Jamie catches you in that house. He may figure he has every right to shoot you. I don't care. I wasn't the kind to play practical jokes. I saw him as plain as I see you. Johnny! What if Jamie should see you? I'm sorry, Ma. Eunice, you know he shouldn't be here. I know, Emma. He's just as stubborn as his father. Where's Jamie? I think he's in his room. <laughs> Any more trouble? I don't plan on causing any more. But I'm gonna have one more look around whether he likes it or not. What are you looking for? He's got some idea his father may have left another will. That Bible passage, Ma. Genesis 27. Isaac couldn't do anything about his sons, but I think Pa did. No, Johnny, I'm not going to let you stay. You can't stop me, Ma. I'm gonna have one more look. Yeah. Johnny! Never Johnny! Mind, Emma, let him go. Let him take his look. Then maybe we can get him out of here before Jamie sees him. What are you doing here? So you figure the same way, huh, Jamie? What'd you find? Nothing, and I told you to stay out of here. What are you scared of, Jamie? What are you hiding? Stay away from me! I told you to stay out of here! I'm going to give him a couple of more minutes and then... <laughs> He's got it. I, John Haney, hereby bequeath... You were right, Johnny. There was another will. Of a later date. Leaving everything to you. This will stand up in court tomorrow. The appearance of John Haney is not unique. Over the years, many such instances have been reported and documented. In fact, the event on which tonight's story is based was directly responsible for a ruling by a court of law, the only one of its kind in our legal history. Jonas Atterbury knew his law. The newfound will was presented in court the next day and accepted without delay as valid. In leaving his estate to his eldest son, John Haney had chosen wisely. John Jr. was not a vindictive man. James was given an equitable share of the estate and departed for parts unknown. And Emma Haney was content in the knowledge that the rest of her life would be spent in the home that she loved. More than that, she knew that when she died, she would rest beside her loved ones undisturbed. For to John Haney, Jr., the land was a sacred trust, not to be passed from hand to hand, 
but held for his children and his children's children. Science does not as yet know all that happens to us after life leaves our bodies, but we cannot say with certainty that there is no explanation of what you have just seen. We can only assume that there may well be one. Please join me again for another journey into the world of the unexplainable that lies behind the bed. Good night. I want you to subscribe to Wayback Machine for classic TV and movies. It's more fun than an Uzi submachine gun. Excuse me, I've got to get back to the chopper!